All right, how you doing? Welcome to the next video on the Soldier of Fortune 2 on New Edition series. In this one, we've pretty much completed the UI. First run code. A um, few things still to do, but I can do that in the background later on. So in this video, I'll give you a complete run through of where we're at, what we've done. I'll show you the getting the list of servers from the master server, which I've pretty much done. Finish the code, just need to make it look right in the, in the UI. And um, then an explanation of where we go from here. So, straight into the game. I have written in C++ a function called get servers and a function called get info. So get servers is what you saw last time you put in the IP address for master.soft2.ravensoft.com and there's another one I found on the internet master.1fxmod.org which is quite good as well. You put in the IP address, you're using both in the game or any master server, you'll be able to add master servers, any master server you like. And you put in the IP address, get servers gets the list of servers that have registered themselves with that master server and get info gets the info from each individual server. The response, get servers is what you saw in the last video, and the response I got was a list of IP addresses and ports, which you then use for get info to get the information from those servers. So... Here we go. I'll quickly just show you that the, the we're getting the list the servers on the master servers because that's what I've just explained there. So it's not asynchronous as it is in Soft 2. I will fix that. This code, this uh, text up here, the red text there, is just debug messages and it's telling me that four or five servers has an error code of. 10060 zero, zero, which is connection timeout. That may be more to do with my code than rather than the server's not responding, but we'll see. But anyway, in the text box here you can see the names of the servers. I've only uh, applied the names to the text box, map name, player, data, game type, ping, all that sort of stuff. Although that is included in the response, I've not applied that to the text box. So the function that I use to pass the name to add the colours is a little bit buggy just now as you can see the text there with the angle of brackets is part of that code and the angle bracket should not be displayed. There's a few th parts to the names that are missing but as you can see each of those lines there represents an active soft2 server that was listed in the master server list. This little capital A here in the box represents a character in the soft2 font that I have it added to the font I created. I was a little bit lazy. I, I, gave, I created capital letters, small letters, numbers and a few special characters and I missed out quite a few other things so now I have to go back and fix that, recreate the font properly including all the characters. There's a white one there up the top, black one, I think there's a yellow one. So there's a few characters that are missing I just need to add in. So anyway, if you were to go on to actual soft 2 and get a, a get a new list of the soft2 servers, these are the names that would come up minus the, the parsing errors and stuff like that. So that is actually working, the, the get server list is working. The other things here, uh, IP address, DS name, server info, all that is as it was the last time. And now I'll give you a, a full run through of where we're at, a complete run through of what we've done with the UI, because that's pretty much the UI finished and I really want to go into loading an actual map and getting a, a, a level uh, loaded into Unreal Engine. So, we'll start with the uh, player menu, the suit sleeves model is applied as it was in the last video, only like in the strad. All the skins that came with the game are loaded, the character skins. Anyone you select gives you the name of the skin up the top there. And I don't know where this little gun is here, that happened when I converted it to the first person shooter template. And you've got the UE4 mannequin there and only in the next in the stride applies the model, so that's going to get fixed and done in the background. The the, the idea of U, U, U4 mannequin is that's like the standard thing that I used before I make it um, turn it into what it was in Soft 2, so if that was to ever appear on the word default, def the word default is my default name for pretty much all variables, so if the word default appeared or the U4 mannequin appeared, that would, uh, that would tell you that there was an error somewhere. So if you're creating a skin for a weapon or a character or something and you've got the word default with the UE4 mannequin, that would be an indication there was an error in your 
your process. The name, the player name, as I said before, is split into three sections, clan name, uh, a separator, and the player name. So, this uses the same function to apply the colours using the, the little carrot there. So, as you can see, um, when you press, press the carrot you get this... Uh, it's not moving, oh that seems to have stopped, oh no it's a right mouse button. You get this um, array of uh, letters and uh, characters here that shows you the, the colours that each character uh, represents. And when you put that in again, it disappears. So, um, the idea of having the clan name and character name is separate is so that you could have the clan name as a variable that could be linked to different players. Um, like to all the players of the clan and used in some sort of ranking system. That's the kind of idea there. And the player name will just be the, the same as it was. So, uh, moving on to the keys section. All the keys that were in the original game are there. Look, move, weapon, miscellaneous. Chat, mouse. I eventually did the mouse sensitivity and set the box. When you double click, flashes red, then gives you the option and exactly as it was in the original game. So, mouse sensitivity, I'll just give you a quick idea. There's two places you have to set the mouse sensitivity. One is in the player character, so it applies while you're playing the game. So if I go into the first person template and down to the first person character, edit first person character, open the full blueprint. Here we have two user settings, X sense and Y sense for sensitivity. It's at one right now, which is normal. So if I put that up to five, compile, save, Alt P, and then move it around, it just is very, very fast. And I put it down to point one. Point one and five are the limits. Compile, save, Alt P and it hardly moves at all. So the mouse sensitivity for the, the I'll put that back to one. Mouse sensitivity to the player character is done. I now have to apply it to the HUD class, but I've only recently acquired the HUD class when I converted to the first player template template. First person template. Um, I was using an empty project originally. And so I copied it all in to the first person template. I now have a HUD class, but I hadn't put my UI in, and in, 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 I didn't use the HUD class in the UI. So when I upgrade next time, I'm going to move everything into the HUD class and I'll apply the mouse sensitivity to that then. Um, what's next? So display settings, little information on the right hand side there about each individual setting. This is what it was before, so if I randomly change some of the settings, apply changes, nothing is applied to you hit apply change, you can hit reset and go back, and then hit apply changes again, or, and then hit reset again, and it goes back, so you can go back and then forward using the reset button. I'm going to have it say redo after reset, but anyway, that's it, and then apply. So then, if you've, I've randomly, ch randomly changed the settings, I can run benchmark. I may have a progress bar while I was doing that. Um, and then it sets the sort of best settings for your machine. It doesn't affect full screen mode or resolution because I felt you should do that yourself. But I might add that in, who knows, anyway. I can go to windowed, up to 1600 by 900. And there you go, it's windowed. Back to full screen. 1920 by 1080 which is the maximum on my laptop and that's display. Effects volume is what well, is the multiplier for each of these volumes might change, it might not be enough just now, but we'll see. Anyway, and I think oh no, medium, high and low channels. Same channels, that's just quality. Um what's this? Scalability settings? Is that scalability? No, that's good. This is miscellaneous in. So, as exactly as it was in the original game, you've got all the different icons for 
the crosshairs, uh, brightness setting, uh, into scalability. As I said in the last the last time, um, the scalability options and the display options are going to be combined into a kind of um, a kind of uh, basic and advanced graphic settings. So all, all of that stuff is really what to do with uh, reducing CPU GPU usage. A lot of that is going to go. So we'll see what Unreal Engine offers, and we'll add that in. We'll combine that into network settings. A lot of this stuff isn't relevant just now. Frame rate is obviously relevant, but maybe not 35 frames per second. It goes up to 115, and obviously unlimited. Um, the password. I haven't quite finished my encryption plugin that I'm doing for Unreal Engine. I've finished the AES128 CBC and I haven't finished the AES256 CBC. Those are the encryptions that I will use just to basically encrypt the password. Um, there's not really going to be much use for encryption in the game. I'm not going to encrypt the files or anything like that. But I do want to do an encryption plugin for other projects that I'm working on. So. Um, oh yeah, that's not quite done yet. Everything there else is done, and the generate CD cut be CD key button has been removed, and you'll have to verify. So available mods in this section. I'm going to look through the mods that we used to play rock mod and OSP and all that sort of stuff, and take out the functionality that I like or that was that was good and put it into the game. And I'll I'll give a bit of accreditation, yeah, accreditation in this section. Um, perhaps other sort of things. Um, parental lock is, is is coming out. I'm not going to use that. I thought about maybe having an allow download set. Not an allow download. A download section. Remember the allow download function, where if it's at yes and you go into a server, it starts downloading all the files. I used to always put that to no. I don't know anyone who used that, but instead of having the parental lock here, we could have like an option to list the files that are on the server that you're connecting to. Not download them, but give you the option to maybe download them off from a separate content delivery network or something, a separate IP address. But you could choose what files you wanted rather than getting them all. So if you were part of a clan and you had your own server, you could make every time you went on, your, your files that your admin put on for that clan could automatically be updated. That's sort I of think. So maybe a, a download section to give you the option to download files off the server. That's done, that's done. Create server um, exactly as it was in the game. Little filter function there. Um, options were the same. Is there anything that any ideas that I come up with that are relevant for it being 20 years later? I will add in and I'll remove stuff that aren't relevant anymore. But that is just pretty much exactly as it was in the last one. And so that's pretty much about it. We've got the get server list function working, so that's pretty much the UI complete. It's not, uh, uh, when I say complete, I don't mean it works the way I want it to work. That comes after you've got all the code working. What I mean is we have all the functionality working. Um, but a lot of this code, as you can see, is a bit messy. I, I tidied it up a lot there, which I'm going to do with the rest of the code. Um, but a lot of the code behind the scenes is very, very bloated and messy. So the next um, plan, as far as I'm concerned, over the next month, I'm going to redo, overhaul, completely overhaul all the code to make it succinct, efficient, and run a lot easier uh, on my computer. Because some of the functions, it just hesitates for a second. So you can tell it's doing a lot of things that it probably doesn't have to do. So... I'm going to completely redo all the code. I'm going to get myself a new laptop. I want to get myself a, an Alienware AMD Ryzen 5, R5. And when I do that, I'm going to upgrade to Unreal Engine 5. And so during that whole process, I'll redo all the code, make it succinct and fast as I can, and all that sort of stuff, and get upgraded to Unreal Engine 5. And from that moment on, from that point on, we will be working for Unreal Engine 5 and not Unreal Engine 4. Two seven, I think we're on just now. I'm not too sure about anything else that I want to show you. I think that could be it. No, that should be it. 
So that's it for the game. That's pretty much everything I wanted to show you. Just wanted to show you the the, the get server list from the master server is complete. Just haven't made it look like it did in the original game. Oh, the other thing I was going to say about that, it pauses there before it uh, updates the list because the code isn't asynchronous as it is in Soft 2. So I've actually got the code to make it asynchronous. I haven't actually uh, added it in yet, but um, what will happen is it gets this main server list from the master server and that only takes half a second, quarter of a second the most, and then it'll run asynchronously um, each get info for each server and then it'll update the server the update the text box one by one as that information comes in whereas now it waits until it's got it all and then updates it so I'll get to that as well but that's just another thing so anyway I hope you enjoyed that I hope you can see we're getting it and hopefully there might not be a video next month because overhauling the, the all the code is going to take quite a while and it's quite a big job but I'm happy to do it um, but there might not be a video next month but come next month it depends if I've got something I want to show you I'll do a video anyway or I might just do a video anyway but we'll see so anyway thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed that and until next time see you later